Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla, and today on The State of Health, we're delving into the impact of intravenous levothyroxine on unstable brain-dead heart donors. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we talk about the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. Make sure to drop by stateofhealth.care for more information about our YouTube channel, newsletter, and publication. Today on The State of Health, we're delving into a subject that holds significant implications in the field of organ donation and transplantation. As many of you are aware, the majority of heart transplants come from donors who have been declared brain dead. However, brain death often leads to systemic complications that can adversely affect organ donation, resulting in less than half of all donated hearts being suitable for transplantation. One theory suggests that neurohormonal insufficiency, particularly thyroid hormone, following brain death leads to myocardial energy depletion and shock. This theory has led to the wide adoption of hormonal resuscitation, particularly with levothyroxine, a synthetic thyroid hormone. Though widely used, the effectiveness of this treatment has been a subject of debate. Some observational studies suggest that thyroid hormone treatment leads to an increase in the number of hearts and total organs transplanted, while others indicate a higher risk of early graft failure. To address this, a clinical trial was initiated to evaluate if intravenous levothyroxine could boost the rate of heart transplants from hemodynamically unstable, brain-dead organ donors. This clinical trial engaged 15 organ procurement organizations across the United States. Unstable potential heart donors, declared brain dead within the past 24 hours, were randomly assigned to receive either an open-label infusion of intravenous levothyroxine or a saline placebo. The main outcome measured was transplantation of the donor's heart, while secondary outcomes included weaning from vasopressor therapy, donor ejection fraction, and the number of organs transplanted per donor. The trial, which included 838 brain-dead donors, revealed no significant difference in heart transplantation rates between the levothyroxine group and the saline group. Moreover, graft survival at 30 days was nearly the same in both groups, and there were no significant differences in terms of weaning from vasopressor therapy, ejection fraction, or the number of organs transplanted per donor. However, the trial did note a higher incidence of severe hypertension and tachycardia among the levothyroxine group compared to the saline group. So what does this all mean? Simply put, the clinical trial sought to evaluate the impact of intravenous levothyroxine on heart transplant rates from unstable brain-dead donors. But the findings showed no significant difference in successful heart transplant rates or 30-day graft survival between those who received levothyroxine and those who received a saline placebo. These findings hold serious implications for organ donation and transplantation. Despite the widespread use of intravenous levothyroxine in hopes of improving heart transplant rates from unstable brain-dead donors, the trial's results indicate that it might not be as effective as hoped. Furthermore, the potentially higher incidence of severe hypertension and tachycardia among the levothyroxine group raises questions about its safety. Therefore, these findings may prompt changes in current medical practices, leading to a reassessment of the use of levothyroxine in this context. This could help to refine current strategies for organ donation and transplantation, ensuring that medical professionals are using the most effective methods available to increase the rate of successful heart transplants and improve patient outcomes. These results are significant as they provide medical professionals with evidence-based knowledge to make informed decisions. This is a crucial step towards optimizing the process of organ donation and transplantation, ultimately leading to the saving of more lives. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.